When the ground shakes, it's probably just an earthquake. Well, 99% of the time, but that other 1% means that there is an underground subterranean monster on the loose. Here in this video, we will take a deep look into another older movie monster that was first featured in 1990, with its last installment four years ago in 2020. These are the Graboids that was first seen in the movie Tremors and then later in the sequels. We will detail out in sequence their origins, the different species, their life cycle and their biology. So let's get to it. So the origins of Graboids was revealed in its sequel movie Tremors Part 2. This movie shows a fossilized Graboid spike dating back to the Precambrian era, suggesting that they have existed for at least 500 million years. And that makes them the oldest living life form on the planet, or at least a surviving species of a very ancient animal genus. However, in Tremors, the series, there is a difference in its dating, with the sci-fi channel suggesting it might be from the Devonian period, but not ruling out extraterrestrial origins. Despite their worm-like appearance, Tremors 3 refers to them as desert reptilians, which seems very wrong in so many ways. While its promotional material classifies them as cephalopods due to their intelligence, their beaks and tentacles, which seems more correct. In any case, they are the oldest surviving species on Earth, outliving every other species except for the horseshoe crab. As of present with the most recent 2020 movie, Tremors Shrieker Island, the Graboids are more widespread on Earth as originally thought so. There are a total of four species, the first one being the original American species, which was discovered in Perfection Valley in the middle of the Sierra Nevada mountain range in the US. The second is the African species that are more powerful and can jump out of the surface for an ambush attack. These are said to exist in South Africa. The third species is an Arctic Graboid that are found in northern Canadian provinces and can burrow under the snow. The fourth species is a product of artificial breeding and can survive swimming in the ocean. These are dubbed the oceanic species. Well, all these four species are related to each other while having certain different traits that makes them unique. They also have slight changes in their life cycle, a topic which we shall discuss and dive into right now. So while the Trevor movies state that there are only four stages in a life cycle for Graboid, we have discovered there are actually five or six life cycle stages in its species life. The first one is the Dominex, which are the first stage in the life cycle. These are hard encased shells that can survive being dormant on the ground for centuries on end. All the species have these as their starting stage. Even though the outer shell can become fossilized due to the long dormant stage, the inner yolk is unaffected and can remain in a viable state for all those hundreds of years. The second phase are the juvenile dirt dragons, which are also known as the Tulung or the shooters and the baby graboids and they represent the initial phase in the Graboid life cycle after the egg. Emerging right after the hatching of the eggs, these shooters are compact enough to leap out of the ground, earning them their nickname. However, this stage is brief as they quickly mature into the full-fledged Graboids. Some might say that the shooter stage is a transient or a miniature phase in the overall Graboid life cycle, but it is clear that the stage comes first and then we get to the bigger and more well-known phase. Then comes the mature Graboid, which is the sole creature to feature in all the films and the 2003 TV series, with four known species found in North America and Africa. In all these variants, the Graboid represents the mid-stage in the creature's life cycle. In the prequel movie Tremors 4, The Legend Begins, which is set in the year 1889 before they acquired the current name, they were actually called the Dirt Dragons. While this name is then later referred to their juvenile baby forms, the Graboid name was then coined by Walter Chang in Perfection Valley in 1990. These are the giant sandworm-like creatures that swim on the ground and they weigh around 10 to 20 tons and measure 20 to 30 feet long or 6 to 9 meters. The Shriekers are the next stage. They emerge from the Graboid initially being one of the tongues of the giant creature which then grow legs and evolve to survive on the surface. These serve as a transitional stage resembling a pupa or a nymph in the life cycle considered potentially the most dangerous form due to the fact that they reproduce rapidly, playing a crucial role in the life cycle as they later evolve into the ass blasters and then lay the graboid eggs. They are asexual, focused solely on reproduction by consuming ample food, leading to exponential growth in numbers. Their reproduction involves detaching a fetus from their stomach or uterus lining, then vomiting it out on the ground with a distinctive screeching process. The newborn immediately stands and then exhibits fast signs of growth and become a mature shrieker in a short amount of time. As for their body design, they are essentially just a beaky mouth with legs and also an ability to detect prey items by thermal imaging from a unique organ situated above its snout. 
Then we also have the African Grabber. So in Tremors 5 Bloodlines, what seemed to be the snake-like chunks of the Graboids actually became entities known as Grabbers. These are distinct from the American Graboids' tongues in that they are sentient and independent parts of the African Graboid species. These creatures can independently hunt, climb rocky surfaces and target areas beyond the reach of the subterranean Graboid. Not really the same as the tongues of their American counterparts, these grabbers might represent a distinct animal species though, suggesting a symbiotic relationship with the African Graboid, but they could also be the African species version of the Shriekers, which are never seen. Then we have the Ass Blaster which represents the final stage of the Graboid life cycle and are seen in all the species. They emerge when a mature Shrieker undergoes further development and they are distinguished from Shriekers in that they have rocket abilities for aerial launching, also wings to glide in the air and the capacity to lay eggs. Their body is longer and more slender than a Shrieker with fin-like wings for controlled gliding. Despite lacking apparent ears, they also possess hearing capabilities similar to earlier Graboid forms and they also have the ability to see in the thermal spectrum just like the Shriekers. The American Ass Blasters measure just over 6 feet in length, about 3 feet in height and with a head and a jaw approximately 2 feet long. The Arctic and the African Ass Blasters are bigger and have a circular mouth with rows of spiky teeth instead of a beak. Then yeah, these Ass Blasters lay the Graboid eggs and the life cycle continues. So let's talk a bit on their morphology and the biology, at least for the worm-like Graboid before closing. So the Graboid is a colossal worm-like creature measuring about 10 meters or 30 feet or 33 feet in length and over 2 meters or 6.5 feet in diameter at its widest point. Weighing between 10 to 20 tons, it claims the title of the largest land animal on earth. Covered in a thick leathery carapace, the Graboid's tubular body is adorned with twisting spines or spikes arranged in irregular rows creating rings around its form with which it moves under the ground. Its head has three-part jaws and tentacles resembling serpents which act as hunting tongues. It can sense vibrations on the ground and has a very fast learning curve, making it one of the most intelligent species as well. Its inner body is composed of, for a majority part, muscles under the thick leathery hide. So all the Graboid variants, which include the Graboids, the Shriekers, the Ass Blasters and so on, respire the nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, suggesting the presence of lungs. It also has an enclosed circulatory system with reddish-orange blood, implying a cardiopulmonary system for at least oxygen transport. While little is known about their nervous system, all forms display signs of sophisticated brains, notably and possibly approaching the intelligence levels of mammalian predators like wolves and lions. Their biggest organ system though, however, is the digestive canal, which might extend for at least 100 meters and has a large stomach that can store an entire cow inside of it. So that's it for now, we will continue this in another Graboid evolution and species video in the near future. Well, if this one takes off. Anyway, that's that. If you like this video, then check this other one as well. And do check out our channel for more monster videos. Like, support, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, fam.